Today we're reading some more retail stories and it's going to be so fun. I'm sure some of these are going to be funny and some of them are probably going to be horrifying. And yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time and I hope you guys are excited. Enjoy, guys. If you want a refund, you have to buy the product first. Man, oh man, I think this happened long enough ago that I can get away with telling it now. Just a little bit of a warning, this is pretty long. There will be a TLDR at the end of the post. For those of you who don't wish to read the entire thing, that's not us. Essential backstory, I work at a computer store. At the time of this story, I worked at the returns desk. It would often function as a customer service desk, but technically there is no customer service desk, as the members of staff are expected to be able to help with every aspect of their respective department. Everyone's customer service. Also know that I am a allowed to be very flexible with our return policy as long as it's within reason. Also I hate working the returns desk. This day was like any average retail day. The store I work at is run relatively well so the day passes by smooth. That is until about an hour before my shift ended when a teenager comes up to my desk hoping to return some computer parts. This includes RAM, a motherboard and a CPU. He doesn't have the receipts however receipts are not required as long as I can find the transactions in my POS point of sale system. Thankfully he has an account and I am able to find the RAM and the motherboard. The RAM I was able to give him a refund on, no issue. However, the motherboard was about 50 days old. Our return policy is 30 days, but I was feeling nice. He's a kid after all, and I remember how confusing I found the world when I was his age, which was not that long ago, but it feels like a lifetime. I told him I couldn't give him his money back, but he could exchange it for a new one or get a gift card, which was standard practice for returns outside of 30 days, but within 60. Well, I can't have a gift card, my dad will get mad. Me. Okay, but I can't give you money back. You're well over the return period, so it's either a gift card or or an exchange. Teen. I guess I'll get a new motherboard then. Me. Which one do you want? Teen. The same one, I guess. At this point, I realized that I'd forgotten why he wanted to return it. It wasn't required anymore, as any open product at this point would be sent back to the distributor for inspection anyway. Turns out his computer wasn't working after he put all of it together, so he needed new stuff. Teen. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Me. Okay, did you want to go look around for some other stuff? Or do you want me to call a salesman over to grab you another board? Teen. Just give me a new one. Now, are you going to refund me for the CPU? I hadn't gotten to the CPU yet as I was still pretty new to returns and I was doing them one at a time to make sure I didn't mess up. Now of course I have to be careful about returns making sure the item is the correct one and all that but I have to be extra careful with CPU returns so I opened it up to do my checks and I instantly realized why this customer's computer wasn't working. For those not in the know the CPU is a small square chip that essentially acts as a computer's brain. They're a super important and extremely fragile piece of equipment. Depending on the brand of CPU there may or may not be pins on the bottom and they're essential for both the functionality of the CPU and the rest of the computer. They're extremely easy to bend or break. However, it's also extremely easy to not bend or break them. So there isn't really a good reason for somebody to damage a CPU. This kid's CPU looked like he took a hammer to it. Me. Well, this is why your computer isn't working. Teen. What? Me. The pins are smashed. Nothing in the computer can even work if you have damage like this. Teen. Oh, well, can I return it? I didn't want to say anything yet because I felt bad for the kid, but we were unlikely to take it back because of the damage and that he bought it over 30 days ago, so I had yet to find the receipt for the CPU. It was a pretty expensive CPU, so I was hoping that management would make an exception and let him exchange it. So I kept looking for his receipt for the CPU. He didn't have a lot of transactions, so I figured I could brute force it and go through them one at a time. And yet, I couldn't find it. It wasn't on any of his receipts. Me. I'm not finding the CPU under your account. Is there another name it could be under? Teen. We could try my dad's. His name is this. I look up his name and no account shows up. Me. Ah, uh, there's no account under your father's name. Oh, he doesn't have an account. I'm the only one who shops here. It's at this point I realized that I'm dealing with a teenager who's slightly stupider than your average teenager. However, I keep my composure and I keep moving forward. I try not to treat people differently based on their intelligence. In a last ditch effort, I check the transactions based on the CPU serial number. We have to manually attach transactions to accounts and sometimes the cashiers neglect to do that for any number of reasons. However, when I scan the serial number, nothing popped up. That was weird. Me. Did you buy this at this location or at a different store? Teen. Different location. I admit, I should have asked that sooner so I could have pulled up the remote search window from the get-go. However, when I pulled it up, it showed that he'd never made any purchase at any of our other locations. He'd only ever shopped at my store's location, me thinking that it could be a glitch in my POS and hoping that I could access the more complete central server database. Which computer store location did you buy this one from? Teen. Oh, I didn't buy this from a computer store. I bought it from Amazon. I just sort of looked at him silently. I didn't know how I got to this point. Why did he think that we would take his CPU that he bought from Amazon? So I asked, why are you trying to get a refund for a product you didn't even buy from 
from here? Teen, what do you mean? Me, you didn't give us money for this. You gave it to Amazon. Therefore, we don't have money to give back to you. That's at Amazon. Teen, sorry, I want my money back. Me, your money isn't here. Your money's at Amazon. If you want your money, you need to go to Amazon. Teen, so you can't take care of it? Me, no, you did not give us money for the CPU. The CPU has no monetary value here and I can't give anything back to you. Teen, can I exchange it? Me, I'm afraid not. We don't do trade-ins. I assumed he was talking about a trade-in. Teen, no, I want to exchange it. Internally, I'm banging my head against a wall. How could a teenager not understand the concept that a return can only go back to where he originally bought it from? Me, in order to do an exchange, you would have needed to buy this product here or at one of our other locations, but you didn't. You bought it at Amazon. There's nothing more I can do for you. You need to send this back to Amazon. Teen, so you're not going to help me? Me, no. At this point, he leaves and I'm relieved that he eventually understood, or so I thought, because not even a minute later, he comes back with my manager. Teen, he wouldn't let me return this and was mean to me. I want a refund. Manager, I'm sorry about that, sir. Do you have your receipt? Teen, no, but I bought it last month from Amazon. I kid you not, that's what he said. Manager, why would I give you money for something that you didn't even buy from us? Teen, are you saying you won't give me a refund? Manager, there is no refund to give and there's nothing I can do for you. The teen then storms off to a salesman and says to them, they were mean to me. They called me names and they won't give me a refund for my item. Salesman, that's not my department. It's their final decision when it comes to refunds. The teen then storms off and tries this routine over and over again, each time getting more and more upset over the next 20 minutes until he's ugly crying to the store's general manager about how horrible everybody was to him and how we won't give him a refund for his CPU. The general manager then asked him to wait and then came to me. General manager, why won't you give him a refund for his CPU? At this point, I really don't care how old it is. Me, he didn't buy it from here. He bought it from Amazon. Ask him. The general manager did just that. When he heard that the teen did in fact buy the CPU from Amazon, the general manager essentially asked him why he thought that we'd take it and give him a refund. The teen said that somebody in the repairs department said that we'd take care of him. This turned out to be a misunderstanding or a lie, as the technician was only saying that I was the one who handled the items. Not that I'd definitely for sure give the kid a refund. Eventually, the teen left, tears in his eyes without a refund. He later left me a survey review that I made fun of him, threw his items on the floor and refused to give him a refund. We have cameras. My general manager had that review dismissed. It's insanely annoying to get a survey review dismissed, so it shows just how ridiculous the general manager thought the situation was. Wow, that's so frustrating. Yeah, but aren't you going to give me a refund? And they ask everybody in the shop the exact same thing. No, you're not going to get a refund, actually. Yeah, you did a good job, OP, like this comment says. My head would be banging into a wall. You handled the situation well. Yeah, that was annoying enough to read about, let alone being in the situation. The next one is called Where Are The Heelys? I used to work at a fairly large sporting goods store. This was a while ago, back when Heelys were still a thing. Are they still a thing? Our store received a promotional display with a large three-foot sign and red lettering that said Heelys. They also put a large spinning wheel on it too. It was pretty cool. Kids loved it. However, for some reason, this sign was absolutely invisible. Like somehow the company had put on special paint that made it invisible to the eyes of adults. Must be the same paint they used to make out-of-order signs. Anyway, here's the story. Where are your Heelys? A woman demands as she approaches me in the shoe department. I've been through this whole store and I can't find them. I was told they're here. Yes, ma'am. I'll take you to them. I bring her to the display and I think it's a little bit obvious because of the large sign. But I put my hand on the display for a little bit extra obviousness and turn around and say, here you go, ma'am. The woman continued to stare at me. Eyes locked onto me like a hawk. So I started to gesture to the large sign that said Heelys. She still doesn't see it. I even tried to do a little Vanna White gesture towards the sign and display. Still nothing. By this point, I'm gesturing with two different hands towards the sign, display, and individual shoes on the display. Nope, she just stared at me like I was a mime acting out the old invisible box routine. Ah, uh, they're right here, ma'am. Where? She asked, throwing up her arms and finally drawing her eyes away from me, looking 10 feet above my head. Where are the Heelys? She practically yells to the heavens. I turn my head slowly to see where she's looking. I start to think this must be some kind of practical joke. Standing in the presence of something as dense as a neutron star is causing a violent reaction in my brain, and I have my first aneurysm. My co-worker who was watching the entire scene play out, finally manages to put on a straight face and come to my rescue. Hi ma'am, are you looking for the Heelys? He's asking her calmly. Yeah, she says frustrated with the service that I'd been providing her. I'm not sure if we have some in stock right now, but if you follow me, I'm sure that we can find some. He tells her, leading her away from the display. He got her to do a half circuit around the store before returning back to the same place in front of the Heelys display, where the whole incident took place. I'm sorry ma'am, they had the display in the power aisle earlier. It was a half truth. It was in fact in the power aisle last month, but moved to the shoe department because people kept blocking the entire aisle crowding around the display. I know we are expecting a new shoe
shipment soon. I will check back early next week. Oh, well, thank you for your time, she tells him as he casually leans against the large, obnoxious Healy's display. This guy's a magician. I bring her to what she wants. She gets mad at me. My co-worker makes her walk around the store for nothing and she's grateful for it. No problem, ma'am. Enjoy the rest of your day, he tells her and we wait until she's out of earshot. He turns to me and completely loses it. For five minutes, he can't stop laughing. He then stands in front of the Healy's display, throws up his arms and shouts to the heavens, where are the Healy's? <laughs> Whenever a customer asks where the Healy's are, I just tell them right down there and look down, you can't miss it. I never went near that display if I could help it. Edit, this was a long time ago, like fresh out of high school a long time ago. I had not yet picked up the skills to effectively communicate with customers, as I'd effectively grown up getting the verbal stiff arm by the adults around me when asking vague questions. So I'd grown up asking specific questions to get specifically what I wanted and assume that adults were expected the same as well. So retail was a big welcome to the real world for me. So what was the explanation here? They just couldn't see? What the hell? Oh, this is so frustrating to read. The top comment says, I noticed early on that pointing doesn't work. People would ask if I had ice cream and I'd direct them to the sign right next to me with all the ice cream novelties pictured. Invariably, they'd look across the room and even start walking in that direction. I would even say, on this sign at the end of my hand and they still wouldn't look. I got totally fed up with trying to point out things on the wall map and I found that a laser pointer works wonders. Their eyes follow it despite their desire not to. Wow, how embarrassing is that? You gotta treat people like they're cats. Yeah, the comment under it, Karen's vision is based on movement, like the T-Rex. Yeah, apparently. The next one is called Lady Attempted to Spit on Me. A few months ago, around the end of November, beginning of December, a woman came into the girl's clothing shop I worked at. Now, the store I worked at recently closed due to being bought out. A lot of people were mad about that, yelling at the employees and demanding an explanation. I wasn't a manager or anything, so I didn't really know much, just what I was told. So all I knew was that any purchases made after November 12th were final sale. No returns or exchanges. The registers are also set up where we have signs saying that all sales are final and we have plexiglass between the cashier and the customer. Oh yeah, by the way, this story is from when COVID first hit. A lady came into the store and she looked pretty put together and wealthy. She was wearing form-fitting jeans, a sweater and had nice makeup on. In my area, we require masks or face shields. So she had a face shield on. It comes into play later. She also had two girls with her, probably nine and five. Both girls were also nicely dressed. She walked around for a bit before finally choosing a set of PJs. She walked up to my register and paid for her things with me telling her two times verbally that all sales were final. We tell them all sales are final before they pay and again when we mark their receipt final sale. She acknowledged me and then paid and went to walk out of the store. On her way out, she stopped and looked at the PJs again. She seemed to find another set that she liked so she walked back up to the register. I took her at my register assuming that she wanted to buy the other set but she slammed the bag of purchase PJs and the other set on the counter and said, I want to exchange these. I looked at her and said, I'm sorry ma'am but all sales are final so I'm unable to do that. She didn't like that answer and started saying, I didn't even leave the store. I just bought these, do it. I explained to her again that I'm unable to do that. We didn't even have the option on the register anymore. She got more and more visibly aggravated with me. She kept demanding that I exchange the items using so many different excuses. Like I just bought them. They're the same price. I didn't even leave. You didn't tell me it's final sale, etc. Keep in mind, there are signs all over the store saying final sale. And I told her two different times. I kept telling her over and over that I couldn't exchange them, but I would be happy to ring it up at a separate purchase for her. She wasn't having it. She eventually moved her face shield up and spit in my direction. Ugh. The spit landed on the plexiglass and not on me. But at that point, I wasn't taking it anymore. I'm not sure if she knew the plexiglass was there or not, but either way, I was done. I called my manager over and I calmly explained the situation to her before stepping back. Now, my manager is a very mama bear type. If somebody messes with her employee, she doesn't take it. She took one look at the customer and said, you have five seconds to leave the store or I'm calling security to come in here and drag you out. The customer was taken aback a bit, but eventually grabbed the PJ she purchased and stormed out. Her daughters were looking scared and embarrassed of their mum the whole time. The store shut shortly after, so I'm not sure if anything ever came off it, but let's just say I'm glad I don't work retail anymore. Ew. I can't believe that. Spitting on somebody is the most scumbag thing to do ever. Like, how gross. What sort of a person spits on somebody? Yeah, like the top comment says, as somebody who was recently spat on by a customer, I'm glad your manager was quick to have your back. I'd almost rather they'd punch me than spit on me, especially when it was during a global pandemic. Bloody feral behavior. Yeah, bloody feral behavior is right. Like, oh, you didn't even tell me that it was a final sale. And then gets upset and spits on them. And it said at the beginning of the post that they were dressed as if they were like, what, wealthy or classy or something? Yeah, there's nothing classy about spitting on somebody. Sorry you had to deal with this person, OP. The next one is called, but I need formula for my 
my baby. Are you sure? I've worked in a supermarket for 10 years. You get your share of Karens and the only thing you can do is smile politely. But what I even hated more after an eight hour shift and having to close up the supermarket were the customers who came in five to 10 minutes before closing and just do their shopping like nobody wants to go home. There was a time that I was scheduled every Friday closing shift and pretty much every Saturday closing shift. The store shut at eight. We weren't open on Sundays then. Also on Saturday, we had to take out all of the cash drawers and manually count all the money. We could start doing this when all the customers had left in the front and the back doors were locked. So customers coming in five to 10 minutes before closing time and taking their sweet, sweet time to shop were hated, hated with a passion. My shop had a procedure. We would barricade our entrance and turn our front door on only opening when people wanted to leave at about five minutes before closing. We would remind customers at a quarter to, 10 to and five to closing time that the store was gonna close and to please go and pay for their groceries. Normally we had very few incidents. This one, however, is burned in my memory. See, colleague, FM, formula man. It was a Saturday. As head of the cashiers for that night, I had the honor to make or break the day of our beloved customers. I had to deal with my fair share of Karens, male and female, and I just wanted to go home. So I followed the procedure. I asked one of my fellow money handlers to set the front door and to stay there to handle any customer. At two minutes before closing time, a man comes running to the door. My colleague asks what he needs and reminds him that the store is gonna close and he won't have much time. He says he just needs formula. Since I was busy with a customer, she let him in. Guy gets a basket and goes into the shop. Since he said he needed formula, we thought he'd be in and out like Roadrunner. No, because FM didn't need formula. At 8.05, FM is seen at the cheese section. 8.15 at our wine section. What the hell does he need that for? What kind of baby does he have? Several of my colleagues have gone to this man to get him to the counter. He scoffs and huffs and says he's a paying customer. My fellow money handler was the last one to go to him. And that's when he went too far. He yelled at her, cussing at her and making a high school student cry. Now I'm pissed, so I do what I always do in these situations. I take off my store shirt, pull out a neat jacket I keep in case of emergencies and put it on. You see, when you have the store outfit on, you're often seen as a lesser being. But behold, I change my outfit and suddenly I look like management and my word is all powerful. The real manager sees this happening, pops out a huge grin and goes to the back and watches from the security cameras. So I don the magical outfit and I go to FM. I tell him in no uncertain terms that the store has been closed for 15 minutes and he's been asked multiple times to go and pay for his things. He starts to huff and puff himself up like the big bad wolf. I'm a 5 foot 2 woman and people think they can intimidate me. I told him he was only allowed entrance since he said he needed formula so I gave him a choice. He could go now and pay for the things in his basket or I'd take the basket from him, grab the formula he claimed to need so much and he could pay for that. He could choose not to do either and in that case security would love to make his acquaintance. I the way he would leave now. He tried. Oh boy, he tried to threaten and intimidate me. He failed. He left with his cheese and wine and many threats to call corporate. The next week he came back again. This time he encounters me at the door. What did he need? Formula. So I brought him to our service desk, went inside and brought out a single pack of every kind of formula we had. Asked him which one he needed. He didn't say a word and then left. Don't mess with our closing times. Yeah, that's so annoying and I bet a lot of people do stuff like this. Like, oh, I know they're shutting, but it's okay. I'm a customer. I can do whatever I want. I feel like if you worked at a place like that, you'd see stuff like this nearly every day. The top comment says, I hate the customers who think they have all the time in the world to shop. If only they step into the store with minutes to spare. No, if you come in at 21.55, you have five minutes. If you come in at 21.59, you have one. The total disregard for the employee's time is disgusting. Excuse me for wanting to go home and not having to wait an extra hour for my bus in the freezing rain because you desperately needed an assortment of cheeses. Yeah, I can't even imagine how frustrating this would be. The next one is called No, You Can't Have a $3,500 Fridge for $1,800. This happened back in 2012 at a now dead big box chain that anchored malls. The company was in decline, but it was still the largest retailer in large home appliances. Our store was in a more affluent area. And out of all the stores I worked in, this one had the most entitled customers. I was a commissioned salesperson, but I was senior enough that I had an approval card and I would handle general customer service issues. A customer, C, and his wife, W, had bought a store brand side-by-side -side refrigerator for $1,800. It arrives and unfortunately, it's a lemon. The compressor won't engage at all. Normally in these cases, the delivery team would automatically set up next day delivery for a working one. Nope, the customers refuse. Store brand has insulted their very existence. They'll never buy store brand again. They come back to the store and they tell their tragic tale. Their lives have been turned absolutely upside down by this horrible tragedy. They've picked out a new fridge, a name brand, which retailed for 2000. They had a friend recommend it to them and all the reviews and industry ratings look great. But here's the catch. It's the exact same fridge. Name brand makes the store brand side by sides and this happened to be the exact twin model. I try to avoid taking a $200 hit. Me? Sure, we could do that exchange. But I want to make sure you're aware that name brand actually makes
makes our store brand side by sides. They have the exact same compressor. You'd save $200 if you kept the store brand and you'd still end up with the same fridge, customer. I know that, I don't care. I'm never having another store brand in my home ever again and we're not paying that $200. It's not our fault that you sent us a faulty product. Now we have to wait and frankly, it's insulting that you'd even imply I should pay the difference. I know the name brand often goes on sale for $1,800 so I am safe to give it for the same price as I'm double checking that I have the margin to make the discount. I know there's something, it's back ordered. It'll be over two weeks before the name brand can even deliver. Me, while normally you would need to pay the difference, I understand how upsetting this is. For your inconvenience, I can offer an exchange. I did notice though that the name brand is currently out of stock in this model, so it will be another week before we can deliver. Does that work for you? You would have think that I'd kick their bloody dog or something. The wife is gasping and covers her mouth. Customer turns an interesting shade of red. Customer, that is outrageous. That will absolutely not work. You expect us to live without a fridge for a week? I will point out now that they still had their old fridge and it was in working condition. Sorry, but I really don't have a way to get one faster. The manufacturer doesn't have any at all until the next batch are ready. Wife, but customer name, we need it now. Customer, do you see that? My wife is about to cry. We need to find another solution. Me, well, we do have more fridges available across multiple brands. I'd be happy to show you other options in the same range. This is where I think they were trying to rip us off. They immediately go for other brands top of the line French door fridges. It's not even the same category. This thing is on sale for three and a half grand. Customer, I think this one got good reviews. It in fact had some of the best reviews. Is it available? Me, it does look like it is. We're still early enough I could have it delivered tomorrow. The difference comes to 1700. Did you want to put that on your store card? The wife's jaw drops to the floor. Wife, what do you mean the difference? Customer, you said you'd do an even exchange. Oh my God, these people are so annoying. Me, well, yeah, on the name brand side by side, this is a completely different brand and it's not even the same type of fridge. I can't do an even exchange, but we will waive the 15% restocking fee and refund the delivery fee for the travel. Customer, I want a manager now. I call the department manager who's equally confused at the demand. He offers to take off the same $200 that we would offer the name brand. Of course, that's rejected with prejudice. He takes it up to 15%. That's $525. But no, they demand an even exchange. He's now at the point that he has to flat out refuse. Manager, that's not something I can do. You can get the store brand tomorrow. You can wait a week for the name brand. Or you can get the other brand tomorrow after paying the $1175 difference. What works best for you? The wife with tears in her eyes. You, you, this is bait and switch. Bait and switch. She literally screamed this next bit to the point it echoed in the mall entrance. Bait and switch. As she did this, the manager was calmly doing something on his tablet. I'll never forget this. Once she's done screaming, he hands her the tablet with a dictionary definition of bait and switch. Manager, ma'am, you seem confused. A bait and switch would be us advertising one product that isn't actually available for us to sell and then trying to get you to buy something else. I can get you that store brand anytime you want. Wife is visibly confused for a second and then she shoves the tablet back into the manager's hands. She takes her phone out of her purse, hand shaking. Wife, you know what? I'm calling my lawyer. I'm going to tell my lawyer about your bait and switch. Oh my God, what do they even think is happening here? And that was that. The manager and I look at each other. I swear he was holding back a smile. Manager, I'm sorry, but since you've decided to pursue legal channels, we can no longer assist you at the store level. I can get you the number for our corporate legal team. You need to direct any further questions to them directly. Wife, no, you're going to talk to my lawyer right now and... Manager, I can't continue this conversation. I'll notify the delivery team to cancel your order. You'll get a refund to your original card. It may take three to four business days for your provider to show the refund. Customer looking mildly concerned. Now hold on, my wife jumped the gun a little. Wife, no, I'm calling our lawyer. We're not going to get taken advantage of. Well, they think they're getting taken advantage of. You're trying to take advantage of the shop. Are you joking? Manager, I'm sorry, but we can't keep interacting with you. Customer, but at this point, my manager and I walked away. The lady sat over in mattress, apparently waiting for her lawyer to answer for a few minutes. Her lawyer mustn't have cared too much for her business because he apparently never answered. Her husband awkwardly posed small appliances before he walked back to her. He wildly gesticulated while yell whispering to her until they left. Transaction was refunded and I never saw them again. Remember this, my fellow retail travelers. A customer threatening legal action is always the fastest excuse to get out of any annoying situation. Oh, that's so wild. I thought you guys were taking advantage of them. That's so unbelievable. But yeah, good job to you and the manager OP. Okay, the next one is called No Ma'am, You Can't Have That Book. In my teens and early 20s, I worked for a supermarket. Unfortunately, I had to deal with my fair share of Karens and Kevins, male entitled people. I was just talking to a friend reminiscing about the past when this story came up. At my supermarket, we occasionally sold books. Not many, but sometimes. This time it was the fifth book from the Harry Potter series. People could pre-order it until four weeks before release date. We had huge posters saying this, and me and my colleague even made banners covering those with text saying,
displaying pre-order not possible anymore. We had separate displays for the not pre-ordered books. Oh, and they can only get the books at the service counter. We had two locked drawers with all the pre-orders. Only shift supervisors and managers had a key. I had the delight to work the opening shift the day of release as the supervisor. Supermarket opened at 8. I was in the store by 7.30 to get the registers ready, give the other cashiers the rundown for the morning and tell them to prepare for the absolute crap storm that was about to come. Problem started at 7.30 when the manager tried to open the doors for me and a lot of people had already gathered and they tried getting in. Manager doesn't take crap from anybody and started to shout at the customers who were already there that they can't get their book without the registers being ready and people to man it. So we get everything ready. Manager and I get the displays with the non-pre-ordered books ready to go. 8 o'clock arrives. Door opens and the herd of customers swarm in. Chaos ensued around the displays and around my service counter. People yelling and screaming that they wanted their books, wanting to pay and basically push others aside. Holy crap. Manager came and I asked if he could find things like tickets with numbers so that we could deal with this in a somewhat orderly fashion. Three hours later, the displays were empty and about half of the pre-orders were gone. Three hours working non-stop to get people their book fixed. Then the problem started. The displays were empty and the only books in our possession were pre-orders. Time limit on those were three days. Book could be picked up on X, Y and Z dates. Afterward, they would be sold. People who didn't pre-order and couldn't buy a book as we were out of stock started to throw hissy fits because no was apparently the wrong answer. It all came to a head when I told another Karen, Karen number 452, no, and she tried to complain to my manager, who told her to cut the crap after explaining the situation to her again. This Karen then went to do her shopping. At the register, she kept on giving me dirty looks and mumbling something. Then a regular customer comes in with her son to pick up her pre-order. She gives her name and address, so I turn around, unlock the drawer, grab the book before locking the drawer again. Unfortunately for me, Karen had heard the customer asking for the book and came to take a closer look. Then Karen went full Karen mode. Conversation went like this. Karen was screeching the entire time. Why do you give her a book? You told me you were out of books. Me, this is a pre-order. We're out of the ones that weren't pre-ordered. Karen, liar that you are. I demand you give me that book now. I was here first. Me, the manager told you the same thing. This book is pre-ordered by this woman. You can't have this book unless she decides to part with it. Surprise, customer didn't do that. Karen continues to screech and curse while I complete the transaction. Then it happens. The moment I try to hand the book to the kid, Karen comes up to me in the workspace behind the service counter and she gets away into my personal space. Karen had grabbed my shoulder. Kid was fast and had the book before Karen could even grab it. And the kid booked it. Smart kid. But no, that's not all. Karen saw her prize in the hands of a kid running and started to try and open the locked drawers. When that didn't work, she proceeded to let me know she was very unhappy. She didn't touch me, but she was screaming so loud and she had me backed into a corner. In the meantime, the poor mother had called for help and I'd pressed the emergency button. She couldn't interfere physically as she had a neck brace on. Our emergency button made sure that cops were called and extra cameras were turned on that caught everything on video. Manager finally is able to wrestle Karen away from me. Cops came and she was taken away. Statements were taken and Karen was banned from the store. She did come back once but when she was discovered by a colleague she booked it. Fun part about it, colleague let out a scream, yelled at her and she ran, tried jumping over a chain with a sign at a closed register and fell flat on her face. Got up and ran out of the store right past me holding her face. I couldn't help but say have a nice weekend. I don't know what happened with Karen after that. Frankly I don't care. I was 17 at the time and I never had to go to court. She got banned and I never had to deal with her again. Oh my god, that was so fun to read. Not fun to be in this situation, but it's good to read about it. Yeah, that has to be enough for today, guys. I'm pretty sure I've hit my limit with this sort of stuff. That was such a fun episode, and I hope you guys had a wonderful time today. But yeah, we need to read something wholesome ASAP, as in like right now. When a cat chooses you, it's a very special honor. Yeah, it sure is. Cats are so beautiful. And yeah, like the top comment says, the greatest feeling ever. Definitely. Six-year-old me giving Dora wrong information. Oh my god, that's right. That's so funny. I remember that. Dora would be on the TV and she'd be like, which way is the ocean? And she'd be standing right in front of it. That's hilarious. That completely unlocked a memory for me. Grandmas, whenever they see you. Grandparents are so cute, aren't they? Well, like a lot of them are. I'm sure they're not all cute. As I'm learning from these episodes, not all old people are good. Some of them are very frustrating or entitled. Stupid. You're not good enough. I love you. Yeah, we've read this one before and it's so good. Breaking the cycle. When you don't have much to offer, but she's stands by your side anyway. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, that's so sweet. And on that very beautiful note, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time today. And if you did, make sure you let me know down below. And also make sure you like and subscribe. I make fun videos every single day. And the comment of the day today goes to B McLevy. I decided to bake cookies this morning on a whim. Thank you for the amazing video as always. Oh, thank you for saying that it was amazing. And also, hell yeah, baking cookies on a whim. That's a beautiful thing to do. I hope they turned out well. There's nothing like freshly baked cookies. And yeah, thank you.
you for the support and thank you all for the support guys make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful amazing rest of your day and you know what i'm about to say because i say it every single day bye